Hello lovelies, welcome to Nut Free Formula, my name's Freedom, thank you for joining me. Uh, today's episode is called, Why Can't I Stop Thinking About the Narcissist? Um, for a lot of people who have escaped or discarded, been discarded by the narcissist, um, you know, sometimes we find that we obsess and ruminate uh, about the narcissist. Now, there's there are some actual reasons why this is happening. Let's just be clear about that. This is not just some random thing. Um, so I've written down five uh, main kind of points uh, as to why I think that that is happening. Um, so let's just dive straight into it, shall we? So the first thing is on the narcissist because during the relationship or situationship as I prefer to call them, um, the narcissists use uh, a couple of techniques. The first one is called imprinting where they will imprint themselves upon your life. So what I mean by this is, for example, just say you have a favourite song. You love that song. Every time that song comes on, you crank that song up. You love it, right? So when you get married, the narcissist decides that that's going to be your wedding song. So now he's made it about you and him. So now every time you hear your song, your song, it's now become the wedding song. And you remember about the waltz that you guys did on your wedding day. Uh, to that particular song. That is called imprinting. So they, it's like I said, that's a technique that they use. Uh, it's subtle, but it really, really, um, <laughs> it makes a difference. So when you're trying to forget about them and that song comes on, you're not going to forget, are you? You've got to remember your wedding and dancing around. This is how they make sure we don't forget about them which leads me to number two, which is the other technique that they use called embedding. So they embed themselves. Um, so for example, one of my clients um, that I talked to mentioned that her ex narcissist always used to comment on how much she loves her eyes. I love your eyes. I love your eyes. Oh, me more. I love your eyes. Now, at the time, she didn't really think anything of it. But now what she's finding is, even when they're no longer together, whenever she looks at herself in the mirror and looks at her eyes, she remembers him saying how much he loves her eyes, how beautiful her eyes were. So it's a trigger. Every time she looks at herself, she is triggered. Um, another um, example of this it's slightly more personal um, uh, how do I say this without being look just quickly if there's any kiddies listening like you shouldn't be listening to this stuff right go and change the channel you no children should be listening to this uh, if you're a bit of a prude and a little bit nervous right just tune out for the next couple of minutes all right so another way um, um, the narcissists embed themselves is saying things like, you know, when they're talking about sex, for example, when you're having sex with them and they say, whose pussy is it? Um, and that kind of thing, you know, so you will say it's yours, you know, it belongs to you. I belong to you. Essentially what they are getting you to say is my body belongs to you. It's your body. My body is your body. And so when you've broken up, even then, when you look at your own body or think about your own body, your brain automatically goes, whose body is it? Or whose pussy is it? So that's embedding. Um, the third reason that, that this kind of stuff happens and why it's so hard to forget them is essentially, you know, that you've been trained. The narcissist has worked very hard to make sure that you are always thinking about them, that that they that their needs, wants, desires, whatever, always comes first. Um, 
so it becomes habit after a while so even though you're no longer with them you're still thinking about them because your brain has been trained to wake up think about the narcissist you know finish work think about the narcissist there are certain patterns of behavior certain things that you did during your situationship where you would like I said think about the narcissist and so unfortunately those triggers will continue to occur even though the narcissist is no longer in the picture the triggers are there and as I said because you've already had all this imprinting and embedding going on and because you know you see um, them in all the places and all you know that you went together you know the restaurants and the nightclubs and the bars and the theatres and you know the places that you went together um, the things that you did together they make as I said they all make gestures they'll make it um, they'll make it so you never forget just like I said just by doing you know random gestures causing a scene it's not always good things either you know it could be that they caused a scene and it was so embarrassing um, you know the night that I don't know here's a classic one on my wedding night in the Chinese food restaurant when they the when we were placing our orders um, my husband had a tantrum <laughs> because he couldn't understand how steak uh, could be served as a communal dish you know he was imagining that that one piece of steak not as in how the Chinese serve steak you know cut up and in a dish for everyone um, and so when I used to drive past that particular restaurant I would always remember that embarrassing humiliating ridiculous um, little scene that occurred so the next thing is number four is you may not be able to stop thinking about them um, if you're not doing no contact properly 99 percent of people who I speak to who say to me they're doing no contact they're actually not doing no contact properly so I'm going to put a link here to um, a video um, about extreme no contact and so what that is it's going to be no contact um, then some you know this is going to be for people who are really serious about getting over the narcissist healing and going on to live their best lives because the reality is when you obsess when you ruminate you're putting so much effort and energy into the narcissist and and it's taking effort and energy away from yourself and your own healing and unfortunately so many so many of the videos online um, I'm noticing are keeping people in a state of victimhood you know keeping people thinking about the narcissist and how the narcissist feels um, etc etc the reality is we don't actually need to know how the narcissist feels all we need to know is that that is someone who hurt us very badly who will do it again if given half the chance and so we need to stay away from them that's all we really need to know when it comes to the narcissist that's really it so if you're ready to do the work um, I suggest that you look at the video the extreme no contact um, and that brings me to point number five actually for some people they're just not ready to do the work some people are still hoping that you know that something's going to give that the narcissist is going to wake up and realize that oh my god I almost lost the woman of my dreams you know and she was the best thing that ever happened to me and how could I be so stupid um, and they're hoping that the narcissist is going to come racing back in uh, a changed man that it's all going to be so different and these are secret little desires that a lot of people hang on to and that's okay and it's part of healing but if you're watching this video it's probably and you're having you know and you're having that like if you're still fantasizing and playing those little games with yourself um, I think it's probably time to now to let it go you know to realize that things aren't ever going to change with them they don't have the capacity for true change 
um, they don't really have the capacity to have healthy relationships or to heal or to um, to be introspective, to look at themselves, to take um, accountability, you know, to validate you. They don't have any of that. So it's not, you know, this kind of this vague dream that one day things will be better. It's just not going to be. You have to retire that thought, darling. You have to let it go. All right, lovelies. And listen, if anyone is actually ready to do the work, like really ready to do the work, um, I would suggest that you either reach out to me or, or another, um, you know, counsellor or therapist or someone who knows about narcissism and specialises in um, narcissistic abuse um, and do the work because, you know, people really do kind of go through leaps and bounds when they uh, do one, even one session. I've had people after one session, you know, um, you know, figuring it out and being at the point where they don't need to keep watching 50,000 videos and they don't need to keep obsessing. You know, people who've realised that this person was just no good for me and I love myself more and I won't let that ever happen again. Um, so yes, have a think about that. Um, I'm also going to be introducing some energy work into um, my sessions for those people who want them. Um, and that's about basically finding and releasing energy blocks within the body. Because a lot of this stuff is is held in the body. Um, we can feel it, you know, in the pit of our stomach when we have that kind of dense um, stress feeling and for different you know for, it's different for different people where we hold our fear and our hurt our grief you know we hold these emotions in our body um, and with energy work like i said we actually locate and transmute the energy um, and that in itself is also uh, an amazing healing modality um, it's not exactly, you know, traditional um, and a lot of people will poo-poo it as woo-woo and that's fine, absolutely fine. We're all entitled to our opinions about that. Um, but it is very successful in moving and healing energy blocks. Um, and one day you'll get to the point where you'll look back and realize that you just don't even care about the narcissist anymore. Not only are you not thinking about them, but you just don't care when you do. So you think about them and it's just like thinking about a potato. Ah, wow. Yep. That's about it. It's exciting and as interesting um, as a potato. And that's when you know you're healed. You're neither here nor there. You know, you don't worry about it. You don't obsess about them. You're not spending, you know, every waking hour researching them and trying to figure them out. You know, you've gotten to the point where you're just ready to let it go and move on. And it's just not that interesting anymore. So that's where I hope to be able to help you um, all get to. So until then, darlings, keep watching the videos, keep doing the work. And yep, get NARC free and stay NARC free. Thanks for listening. Bye.